Indonesia actually have a policy to do uh, energy security hand in hand with the fulfillment of uh, energy security and also energy transition. So that's why uh, we try to make it balanced. The energy transition doesn't jeopardize uh, energy security and affordability and also accessibility in Indonesia. What we have to do now, we know that the energy demand, the energy con consumption is rapidly growing. In the last 20 years, it grows around 47%. That's good. That leads to economic growth. But unfortunately, it comes with the cost. Our carbon emission also rapidly grow. Last year, achieved around 600 million ton CO2 carbon emission. And the government itself tried to enhance our target in NDC. 2030, it should be met around 31.98% the carbon emission reduction. But we also recognize that we still have energy security issues and also the affordability. So that's why the energy transition, we have to be careful. We have three terms to energy transition. For short term, the energy security become our priority. But we reduce the carbon emission. For example, in our national grand energy strategy, the fossil energy is still available as a primary resource of power generation. 2050 is still the total fossil energy is 69% in our energy mix. But we do the different way with green operation. For example, for coal power plant, there is also retirement schedule, the passing down the coal from our power generation. And we also increase the coal firing, blending the coal with biomass, with ammonia, and so we still keep energy security, but in other hand, we also reducing the carbon emission. For the short up to term, medium term, we recognize that natural gas that has a less emission is a suitable transition energy. So Indonesia has a huge potential for gas. We have five gas recovery and we need to build the infrastructure, terminal, the regasification, the storage, and also the distribution. We have a robust target to develop the gas transition up to the city gas. And we also know that there is a, a stranded asset that we have still optimized. So Indonesia will convert the existing refinery to green refinery and also integrated to the chemical complex. So it's the way and for the long term, of course, we started already with development of renewable energy. We have a lot of potential for the uh, power generation itself. The approximately, we have 400 gigawatt potential of renewable energy. And also, we are the second largest of natural based solution potential. We have uh, solid capacity, huge solid capacity for carbon capture and sequestration. Pertamina and our partner just recently found in one, in one basin, there is 12 gigaton CO2 uh, emission uh, storage. So TCUS is also become our uh, critical and key point in uh, the carbon system program. And the other thing, energy efficiency. So we not just, not just uh, manage the supply side, but also the demand side through energy efficiency, uh, digitalization, modernization, and also the technology that have uh, reducing, I mean, the energy saving component. 
but there is three challenges on how we can accelerate the transition toward renewable and also sustainable energy. The first is technology. We have natural resources, but we still technology and then should be the technology that push the affordability. Now, the tariff of renewable energy is still higher compared to the fossil energy. And affordability in Indonesia has become a challenge. So we need technology, uh, technology transfer from developed country to developing country. The second is finance, the green finance. For example, to passing down to early retirement, the coal, if we start to early retirement starting 2030, PLM, our utility company, need around 38 million billion US dollar. So it's a huge money. And to meet the NDC up to 2030, Indonesia should invest around 314 billion US dollar. So we need uh, green uh, financing to allow us to accelerate the energy transition. And third, it is very, very important, uh, uh, especially for developing countries like Indonesia, is human capital readiness. And also include micro, small, and medium enterprise. So we need to take care about this very carefully. We have to prepare them to enhance their ability to change. I mean, change in, in order to reskilling, upskilling, now, most Indonesian people is involved in fossil energy sector and almost 90% is involved in medium small enterprise. So we need to bring them up in terms of skill and also technology. People always say, in the transition energy, no one left behind and we hope to prove that with the proper uh, program to accelerate the ability, the human capital, and also the medium small enterprise to change and become relevant to our energy in the future. Indonesia have a huge reserve on coal. We can just ignore that, I mean the fact. So we can still utilize the coal with green approach. For example, coal power plant. We have to implement and already started ultra, ultra super critical technology that produces less emission and also co wiring and carbon capture. And the other side, not just for power sector, but we start to develop the coal gasification to the ME, the metal ether, that this product is substitution for the LPG. So Indonesia right now still imported LPG 70% and also coal to chemical. We know that chemical Indonesia also still depend on the import. So we have a lot of opportunity how to use our coal reserve to become more valuable uh, uh, added product. Uh, actually in Indonesia we still have to improve our production in oil and gas. So we, we uh, in terms of technology, we apply uh, unconventional technology and also uh, EOR to speed up, to accelerate the uh, incremental I mean, uh, production. And in terms of the carbonization, uh, Pertamina already apply what we call the uh, flaring gas recovery system and it works. Last year, until last year, we successfully reduced 29% of our carbon emission. So we will also continue with the carbonization uh, uh, program. Uh, we also produce the biomethane and also bio crude. So there's a lot of initiative in, in, in uh, technology, uh, but basically we will unleash our domestic resources to become uh, energy. So in this way, we keep our research, re resiliency, I mean national res resiliency in energy supply. 
through unleashing domestic natural resources. Now, Indonesia has become the 18th uh, contributor in uh, greenhouse gas inventory. So we have, we have to, we need to do, I mean, the, 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 the carbonization and also the energy transition. And the other side, we have a potential, a huge potential in primary energy use owned by Indonesia. So in order to, to uh, maintain our energy security and affordability, we, we have to unleash that natural resources. And we have, as I uh, explained before, the natural-based solution, the second largest in the world, and also carbon capture potential for storage and utilization. So from that uh, potential, I believe that Indonesia is, has a good opportunity to accelerate the energy transition toward uh, sustainable uh, energy.